Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition with me, Elmeron. <clears throat> it has been um, a few weeks since I recorded. Uh, my brother came to town. It was great hanging out with him. I don't get to see him very often because he lives in Taiwan and I am in the United States. Um, it's a bit of a time difference. Um, not to mention there's an ocean between us. So, you know, I wanted to be able to spend time with him when I could. Um, but that does mean I've mostly forgotten what was happening the last time I was I played the game. Um, I remember that I'm going to try to finish off that voice, the voice of whatever quest, just because to get it to get it done hopefully properly. Um, and so I've I've got I looked up um, somebody on the Beam Dog forums had a good step-by-step step, and I've done I've gone up through uh, talking to Nim, getting the information out of Nim, killing Nim um, and uh, then I gonna, I'm gonna this is the Fallen Temple is where I've gotta go to find Brother Harkin so in we go alright, bunch of bone golems a bunch of good bone golems Just all of the bone golems, just so many. I, I'm glad to see that my people have decided to keep targeting um, as they kill things. That's good. Okay, so that's st step one. Right. Long enough? Long enough. Save game. And then... Oh, hi. Gauntlet, Vanbrace, Coter, Re Reverbrace, Pauldron, Tacit, Grieve. What are you doing? Partaking in the ritual of obedience, it is how I issue commands to the beloved servant of our church, the voice of Dirtle and Atha. Experienced his blessings earlier. Demand you stop this. You cannot torment his soul. The Holy Litany. If his word is not law. The Holy Litany which I recite comes straight from the mouth of Pokalin himself. If his word is not law, what is law? The word of Ilmadur is law. You follow the words of a man. Can you even recite the prayers of your faith? Of course. How dare you question my faith. Beloved Ilmadur, we... In Hold on. We ask your blood... Uh, damn it. Intercede on... Be be Lord of mercy, grant Clement... Mm, man, die! Indeed. Hey. Before you strike, you should know I've discovered the, what caused the rift between the dwarves and elves so long ago. If your words rings false, it was Nim, a dark elven merchant. He stole the artifacts and sold them to the goblins attacking the hand of the Seldarine. That's why the elves thought the dwarves sold the artifacts to the golems. I can sense the truth in your words. I have also heard the words of Harkin. This armor was forged to serve man. My soul was forged to serve Torm. Now that I know the truth about the Dwarven artifacts, now that I know that Harkin does not serve Ilmeter, I am free. Now I can use my own voice to thank you. I will always remember what you have done for me. If you would do me one last service, please take my remains to one of the temples of the Trinity for burial. It would mean a great deal to me, knowing that I was buried on holy ground. Thank you. Farewell. Okay. Sure. All right. Bye, Harkin. The voice's bones. And now, let's go back to the temple in Koldahar, which is less than obvious based on what he said, but not unobvious so this might be a bit of a journey I should probably go ahead and pause the recording while I get back there be right back and we're here church done
So that brother Pokelin sounds pretty suspicious, doesn't he? How about the weather? I pretty see. snowy. I believe I have something for you. A cursed paladin in Dorne's Deep recently asked me to bring his mortal remains to a temple of the Trinity for proper burial. I helped end his curse, but he wanted to ensure that he would find rest on consecrated ground. Yes, yes, I can sense the truth of your words. I've heard the tales of fa a phantom Tormish paladin, but I thought they were only stories. If the legends are correct, you have done our church a great service. Torm, Tyr, and Ilmater are brothers in righteousness. We will inter this holy warrior's remains with pride. Please accept a gift on behalf of the Church of Ilmater. You have suffered long and hard in your quest to vanquish the evil that threatens us. If you are pure of heart, this will aid you in your struggles to come. I'm glad I could be of service. Ooh, levels. Level six priest spells. And okay, uh, let's see. Detect illusion is pretty good. Find traps is let's make that even better than it is. And put the rest into pickpockets, just you know, for fun. I guess. And that's that. Also, excuse me. This armor was a gift from Sister Kalyan of uh, the Glory of Suffering plus six for saving the soul of the voice of Dirtle Onatha. It was once worn by a humble paladin of Ilmater named Idston the Simple. Donning the armor is a painful process as it drives small spikes into the flesh of the wearer and weighs an incredible amount. In exchange for this sacrifice, the armor protects the wearer from attacks of his or her person. The armor is shining silver, but there is always fresh blood staining its surface, even when it is not being worn. Physical damage resistance plus 10%, but maximum hit points minus 25. And AC minus 3. Well, she does have the best, the most hit points we currently have. And this one is only an armor class of, um, well, uh, let's see. No, you've got it. How heavy is it? 80. Oops. How heavy is this? 55. So, 25 heavier. Your strength is really good. 116 hit points. Hmm. There might be ways to make that better. Let's just... Put your armor class down by two. Put your hit points go all the way down to ninety to the nineties. Wait, ninety one would go down below even Elmeron's. Hmm. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'm not sure that it's worth the hit point loss. For two better our AC. Well. And she's usually not the one getting hit. On the other hand, she's usually not the one getting hit. On the other other hand, she's usually... Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> hard to say if it's better to... Done. Come on, guys. We gotta go rest. It's a long it journey to get fast. here. We gotta go take a take a nap. In the Very nice well. warm area no here. Task. And hopefully this means 
Question mark. We should be good. Yay, he's not here to attack us this time. Alright, and then apparently... Wait. Um, up here. Apparently there's one extra, one more thing to do in this quest in the Artisan's District. Is the this is the artisan's district? Yes. Okay. As you I'm wish. supposed to go as far west as I can. Up here. Yep. Here now, and there's a body. Really, dude? With pale justice plus four. This sword was made with one purpose to destroy evil. Though a powerful weapon, pale justice has humble beginnings. The plain sword was crafted by a devout worshipper of Tyr named Reynold. Reynolds spent 30 years of his life perfecting the metalworking techniques that allowed him to craft an almost flawless blade. As soon as Reynolds had completed the unadorned weapon, he turned it over to the Church of Tyr. The priest who received it placed the naked blade on his monastery's altar. He asked his brothers to join him in praying to Tyr to ask their god to bless the weapon with holy power. The brothers never touched the blade, nor did they speak of it. After ten years, despite the fact that all of the other brothers lost faith in the blade ever becoming enchanted, the original priest, Idan, continued his prayers in silence. Another twenty years passed, and there was still no sign from Tyr. Visiting priests of Helm scoffed at Idan's blind devotion to the blade. It was then that, without warning, Idan walked up to the altar and gently removed the dust-covered blade from the altar. That is an awkwardly worded sentence. The priest of Helm asked Idan if he had finally come to his senses. Idan replied that he had, that he had been expecting the wrong thing from Tyr the entire time. He stated that Tyr had done his work long ago. The priest of Helm laughed out loud at Adan's claim and asked his bodyguard to draw his sword. The magnificent weapon in the hand of the Helmite had a gilded guard set with pearls. Runes were etched along the blade with a small cluster of fine rubies set in the ricasso. The priest of Helm laughed again and spoke, This is truly a sword blessed by the gods. Your weapon looks like an ordinary soldier's blade. It pales in comparison. Idan calmly black grabbed the blade by the tang and swatted at the guard's weapon. The priest of Helm's laughter cut off quickly as he stared at the retainer's, his retainer's broken weapon. He stood there speechless as Idan set the blade down and began to reply. Justice always pales in comparison to vanity and ostentatious displays of power. I expected Tyr to manifest his divine will in this blade with lightning and fire. I should have remembered how the blade was given to me, with simple charity and humility. Justice is the right of every man, no matter how rich or poor, no matter how educated or ignorant. It should be found as often in the fields of farmers as it is in the fields of battle. Idan took the blade to a local weaponsmith and had him put a wooden, leather-wrapped grip on it. He then gave it to a fledgling paladin and asked him to always remember the potential for charity and kindness in the human race. Immunity to cloak of fear, horror, dire charm, symbol of hopelessness, and mournful wail. Plus four, plus seven versus evil. And it's a long sword. That is pretty good. Hmm. Hmm. That, I vaguely recall seeing that that's the real prize. Is this sword not not the not instead of the arm not the armor but the sword? So, 
that fast gives armor class. Is the weapon you're holding? So you still have to row to hell. Maybe I swap, switch, pass hold fast down to Elmeron. Um, I'm blanking on what I was about to do and also what I was about to say. Shoot. Anyway. Yes. Okay. So that is that. That's the end of the quest. And now we go back to the palace. We'll go back to the Forbidden Temple. And let's start working on clearing that place. So if I pass Holdfast down to Elmeron, it's minus one intelligence. But it's only when he's holding the sword anyway, and most of the time he's using a bow. Hold fast to you. You take pale justice. You are a paladin anyway, although for the moment the Axe of Caged Souls is really good against the cadaverous undead, so we'll hold on to that. And you can do that and take that, and then Turot Hell can go down there. Perfect. Although Still, keep your bow. We need six badges, and we have three, four. We have four, so one more from this temple. Very well. And there was more down in the mines, if I recall. So those are the two places we still need to go and clean up. on my foot, but my cat is lying on my knee, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to disturb him. I see. Okay, so, um, this banner, one is a diamond surrounding two hands bound with a red cord. The other is circumscri a circumscribed do white dove. All of those are the same. Oh, God. Zombie lords and greater mummies. Lovely. This is why the, discri the uh, suggestion was to hug the south wall. Okay. Racking pain. What does it do? Tell me what it does. What does pain do? Is it lowering your decks? Is that what pain is doing? I can't tell. Ow. I believe it's time for for magic arrows, please. Yes. If ever there was a time for magic arrows, I feel this is it. I am here. I'm here. Yeah. Um. You have my undivided attention. And Lot of mummies, and they are all casting spells. Should 
that one. What now? Shoot that one. You're still targeting that one. I await your instruction. You have need of me. You guys stop with the casting already? Goodness. going on here and it's speak your mind your life is forfeit you have need of me okay so that all happened Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Stun and hopelessness. Just pain. Hopelessness. Um, does... Yes. Alright guys, reconvene. I'm ready as always. Let's do... See if... Did that help? Nope. Didn't help the hopelessness. Now we're all fatigued. Yeah. Okay. You're still stunned. Um... Do, 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 do. Shield of Faith, Cure of Heart Wounds, Drop on Holy Might, Prayer. Okay, well, if we could get you to stop being stunned. And do you have, maybe you have a scroll. Do you have a scroll? A scroll of remove paralysis. Would that help? Paralysis, such a uh, related magic. Well, let's give it a shot.
Yes, okay, I think that worked. Yes. Alright, guys. I see. Let's go. We're, uh, we're tired. That was, that was, that was quite something Done. to, uh, to greet you. We're, uh, we're just gonna go back to the watchtower where it's safe and take a nap. Mara is very eager to do so. Working on it. I'm tired of trotting around like a damn mule. Let's find an inn and some warm beds. We must halt and regain our strength. <sighs> I am in need indeed. Nice rest. I'm working on it. Go upstairs, guys. Whatever we have to do, it'll keep till morning. Yes, That's I right. know. Come on. Go in the door, guys. Right there. I am exhausted. Goodness. Okay. You know what? I just realized we got extra spells, and I forgot entirely to assign them. Does this do plus two AC and saving throws? Effects, turn based spell effects. Huh. Have I been sleeping on that? Is that actually good? Another level three. Disease might be useful. Remove paralysis. Yeah, see, you had removed paralysis, and you were the one who was, in fact, paralyzed. Wasn't great. Wasn't a great combo. Grab cure disease just to have it. And then one sixth level spell. We can do Aerial Servant, Blade Barrier. Blade Barrier is a sixth level spell in this edition. A wall of... I see why. A wall of circling razor sharp blades that whirl and flash around the caster, creating an immobile barrier. Any creature attempting to pass through the blade barrier suffers 8d8 points of damage with a save versus spell for half. Caster is immobile for the duration of the spell. Heal... Wipes away any disease and injury from a target creature. Cures blindness, disease, poison, intoxication, and feeble mind. Restores to max hit points. No effect on undead constructs or extraplanar creatures. Cannot be cast by evil aligned characters. Physical mirror. Any missile weapon intersecting the disc is reversed in direction. Okay. Uh, spiritual wrath. Priest becomes the fo focus of spiritual energy, which shoots out from the caster in four directions. All creatures in the bolt's paths take damage. Creatures of the same moral alignment, good, neutral, and evil, are unaffected. So that's actually decent. Because my people are all good. Enables the caster to bring back to memory two spells that have been previously cast. Bolt of Glory... Channels a bolt of divine energy. No attack roll is needed. Creatures struck very, suffer varying damage depending on their nature. Interesting. Not very much to elementals, but a lot to undead, and even more to fiends. Aerial servant. Servant will attack enemies that the caster decides, staying until the duration of the spell expires. 
Or to slain. Conjure animals. Entropy shield. Plus six to armor class, plus two to saving throws, plus 50% resistance to electricity, fire, cold, and acid. Mean to flame strike and all missile based attacks, including missiles created by spells such as magic missile. Interesting. And false dawn. All undead creatures suffer 66 fire damage and are blinded. No saving throw. You take false dawn. That sounds fun. You take spiritual wrath. That also sounds fun. You have a third level spell slot. is not that much better than what you already have. So probably not worth it. Let's give you remove paralysis just to just to have an extra one. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and call this a little bit of a short episode, but I wanted to have something. Uh, we did finish a quest. We went into a temple. Uh, for, uh, like two steps further into the temple uh, and got ambushed by a bunch of undead. Next time, we're going back to the temple. And we're going we're gonna to do more. We're going to clear the place, maybe, hopefully. Those weren't ca cadaverous undead, were they? Those were mummies and zombies, not, not the giant skeletals, skeleton things. So maybe the Pale Justice would be best. All right, Pale Justice it is. Anyway... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will talk to you next time. Bye for now.